Paul was our uh, producer on oh, our okay. kind of first huh? producer, yeah. right? <laughs> and only producer. <laughs> on our, on our uh, CD. Everybody's here, aren't they? Yeah, we brought everybody. Okay. We want you to meet everybody. Just let me, I'll write down everyone's name from left to right. Or just so right I know. to left. Right to left. Her right, her right, her right, right. to left. That's Paul Coyle. Coyle. H O Y L E. Like McCartney, actually. Got it. And who, who are you? Gary Buckstell. Gary's my brother. You're the brother? Oh. <laughs> He's the brother. Oh, wow. That's his claim to fame. He's the brother. I'm the one I've been talking to, so. Okay. And I'm Ellen. I know who you are. Okay. I'll Is be. there a hyphen in your name? No. Uh, if you want, I, I anyway, doesn't you, you don't you don't care. Okay. No, but both names if you use both. Names. Right. Okay. Yeah. Of course. And how do you pronounce it? It's Seagull or Seagull? Seagull. Okay. okay. Steve Seagull. Uh, Seagull. Bu it's Buckstell Seagull. <laughs> Buckstell. Right. Buckstell. Okay. But with the accent on the stell. The L. Buckstell. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and Take it to us. I'm Andy. Andy Newman. Got yeah. it. How's Andy? Yeah. With the E U M A N N. No R. Steve Rosenberg. <laughs> Okay. How do you spell Bloom? Berg. B E R G. Oh, Berg. <laughs> yeah, I, Iceberg. Iceberg. Okay. You're doing good. I'm, I'm, John Bomber. I've been off all day, so. John Bomber. John Bomber. J O N. Where are you coming from? Okay. B A U M G A R D. Spell the last name again. B A U M G A R D. Steve. Hi, Steve. Nice, nice to meet you. Oh, this is going to get confusing. Do you like Jonathan? Yes, I do. <laughs> Would you rather prefer John? Doesn't make any okay. difference. Good. And doctor, doctor, the broadcast, you can say John. He's Dr. John. Dr. John. Doctor. You got two doctors. <laughs> Are you real? Are you a doctor? I'm a pediatrician. And Dr. Rosenberg. Can I do this? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
a little bit. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Ruffles there. Don't move around a little bit. Okay. A little bit. You're wearing black. You don't have to worry. <laughs> I move around a lot. Uh, okay. He moves around a lot. I forgot to warn you. Okay. Anyway, so just don't even look at him. All right. I'll look at He's you. He's going to distract you. Okay. That's his job. But That's going to be hard. Okay. Ellen, when did you start the group and why did you start the group Legacy? I mean, what, what is it all about, really? Well, actually, um, I've been singing with my younger brother since we're young kids. And um, my brother's been writing songs since he's about nine years old. And uh, we've always been singing together. Uh, about 12 years ago, my husband, Doug, recorded a demo of three of our songs. And um, we, um, I'm not really sure how to answer that. Well, let's, well, the focus of our piece is that it's called Legacy, right. so it doesn't have to be too complicated. Well, actually, um, do you want me to get into, uh, you know, about Doug and oh, sure. the whole sure, story? Oh, sure. Sure, Yeah, okay. Um, eight years ago, my husband, Doug, was diagnosed with HIV. He was a hemophiliac. He and his brother, Scott, were both hemophiliacs, and they were diagnosed with AIDS which they contracted through contaminated blood products and um, we uh, decided shortly after that to basically go public with our story to try to help um, to create some awareness in the community about uh, how we were living with AIDS and how we were um, able to live with AIDS without fear because we had information and we had some awareness of the facts about AIDS and how it's transmitted mm -hmm. and there was a lot of fear in the community so we started speaking out and going to uh, synagogues, uh, churches. We spoke to healthcare professionals. We just started doing a lot of things. We spoke to the President's Commission on AIDS. This was at a time, though, in the early 80s, when people had this hysterical fear of, of even sneezing on somebody. Is that right, true? right. People were, were very afraid. So the fact that um, Doug was 
um, uh, actually, our family was was afraid for us speaking out. We, th you know, a lot of people were concerned that uh, our friends wouldn't allow their children to come over and play and. Um, we just decided that there was really the only way for us to deal with it was to be open because we were going to be open with our children and we were open with our family and friends and, and there wasn't any reason to be closeted about it. I think the, the idea of being closeted gives credence to the, to the fear and if you have information and you understand uh, about AIDS and how it, you can get it, how it's contracted, you can certainly avoid it. So um, we started going out and speaking in the community, sharing our circumstance and how we lived with it. We still... Uh, uh, hold on just a minute. Are, are we okay with light? <laughs> Not really, right? We were fine until then. We're fine now. Okay. okay That's just fine. Just uh, start from... Oh, there okay. she is. Hey, Margo. Hey, Margo. Margo's here. Okay. Want to move it to the right a little? Just or left a little? No, that's okay. You sure? Yeah. She made it a little better. Why don't you get on your knees down here? Good job. Can you get you still get her in maybe? She looks about the same age as him. Very uh, a little young. She's nine. She's nine, eleven. Nine, twelve, and eleven. Okay. So basically, though, <laughs> you live together as a normal family. We live Why together as a normal family, hugging and kissing and sharing the dinner table and dinner plates. And uh, I think the only thing we did with our in uh, as a prevention was to keep Doug's toothbrush on a high shelf because you know when you brush your teeth, your gums tend to bleed. So. Uh, there really wasn't any other reason to be afraid. Um, he and I, uh, in terms of, of uh, our um, sexual relationship, we had to make some changes. But um, so we, in essence, took the took our story to the public and uh, in an effort to create some awareness and and try to help people to not be afraid that they could be around somebody who has AIDS, that they didn't have to be afraid for their health and that there was um, um, obvious casual contact wasn't going to spread AIDS. And so we started speaking a lot. We did it for uh, two years while Doug was sick. And finally in 88, uh, after wasting um, Doug, when I met Doug he was about 200 pounds, very robust, and when he died he was probably not more than 80 pounds, 80, 90 pounds. So um, a lot of the press, a lot of the, the things that came out in, the, uh, in our interviews and the things was that what Doug was trying to do and what we were trying to do was create a legacy for our children, uh, not only of um, information but of, of uh, awareness and try to dispel fears. So in our effort to dispel the fears, we, were, we felt leaving an important message to the community and as a result to our children because they're the ones that, that will you know, live beyond and needed to know and needed to go to school without fear and, and, and to be able to stand up and say it's okay and to deal with people's, you know, confront, people confronting people's them. Phobias. Right, people's phobia. And I f we always believed that if we were okay with it, that they would be okay. Everyone said, oh, what about your kids? Uh, people might not play with them and, and all that stuff and we just decided, first of all they were very young so some of those things if they happened we would have probably been able to shield them from it um, so it wasn't mm -hmm. hey, sit down sweetie well, let me ask them, when, when you, when you okay. hear the music oh, she's leaving when you <laughs> hear the music though does it remind you of your dad and do you feel like it's, it does him a, a service yes I Actually, well, I've listened to the music, the music a thousand times, and still, uh, every single time I try, like, yeah, it makes me think of my dad in some bleak ways, because I try to make harmonies to the music. Mm -hmm. I always ask my mom if I can record. I think, think your dad would be proud of you, yes. your mom, right? Definitely. 100%. What do you think, Todd? Same as Brett. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, when we, we've always been singing together. Um, Andy writes songs, and I only in the last year have begun to write songs. This poem that originated, um, that became Another Place in Time, was originally a poem I wrote when Doug was sick, and we put to music. And um, it just evolved. Uh, we've been playing together for years. Uh, just in our in the living room and, and out and about, you know, we go we do different venues just as a, a 
brother and sister, you know, Andy, Gary and I, you know, we would go. And then people started asking us, where are you playing? Where are you going to play? <laughs> we want to come hear you again. So uh, we, I just decided it was time to uh, get organized. So we got organized and the, the name Legacy came out of um, what we're all trying to do. Gary has a son. Um, and all the music that he's written and the music I've written and Andy, we're, we've etched it on a disc now and it's forever, uh, it's forever. And if, if, if nothing comes of it, it's something that we've had a wonderful time doing and, we, and it's come from, it's been, you know, heartfelt. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, every, and, all, and a lot of the press that we had when we were there, a lot of the word legacy kept coming up because that's what we were doing, we were trying to. That was before you even decided to name your group? This was uh, six years ago, seven, eight years ago. Legacy is just, it, it's, it, it says everything because, uh, you know, those of us who have children, we want to leave something to the world and leave something to them, and that's what a legacy is all about. And the idea of, of continuing to bring awareness to the community was, this was just another mm -hmm. soapbox. Now, when you say awareness, since we know what you're talking about, yeah. let's, let's illustrate that for our viewers. What do you mean by awareness? What is it that people don't are not aware of about AIDS even today that they should be? Well, I think that people need to uh, not be afraid. I think that when what what would happen when we would go speak is that uh, people related to us um, they could see that we were living with it. And because so many people are afraid of it, I think that it validated, um, it helped to uh, alleviate some fears that we would say we lived together, we shared, I slept with Doug till the night he died. Um, uh, awareness about compassion, awareness about realizing that AIDS is a human disease and that it affects and can affect all of us. It doesn't uh, single out any one group of human being to affect and awareness of how AIDS is transmitted, um, how not to get AIDS. Um, I've, he and I together have probably spoke hundreds of times and since then over the last six years I've continued to go into the school system. On the, I'm on the Day County Speakers Bureau, Day County Public School Speakers Bureau so I go out and talk to kids in the schools. Um, that's where I bring more specific awareness about transmission and um, how you get it, how you can prevent yourself from getting it. Um, so those are the kinds of awareness. I think the biggest awareness that we can bring as a group is to say that people are suffering from AIDS, people need compassion. There is no one that deserves this disease, it's a horrible insidious disease that, it, that causes a lot of pain and suffering, as many diseases do, but this is something that can be prevented. It's something that with education and information, you don't have to get it. Now, well, Also, you talk a little bit about the fact that even with this horrendous suffering, it's got to be a lot more painful, the fear that goes with it and the way that people treat the victims of the disease. I mean, Brett's nodding his head. Did, did you ever have trouble with people not understanding about your dad and how he was sick? Well, not I, I, not many people know, like in my school, about my dad, but last year when we were learning about human growth and development, we learned about AIDS and, um, and I told the class what happened and then and I started crying and I went out, I went out of the room. I, d I don't know what everyone else thought, but uh, I was excused for the rest of the time we were learning about AIDS. But did your friends talk to you later? And yes. Really they understood? Yes. That anybody can get it? Yes. That it's not really contagious mm -hmm. from a sneeze? Yeah. You know, I, I have to say something that, I've, something that I've discovered, and that is that I think that, like any issue that's controversial, mm -hmm. the, the loudest people seem to be the fewest people. And from our experience, we found unbelievable support. That isn't to say that a lot of people who have AIDS don't suffer tremendous rejection. From One significant message we want that we tried to 
to give out, and that does also express real clearly, was that it did not matter how you got AIDS, that he had AIDS and he was heterosexual. A gay man who had AIDS or a woman who had AIDS was homosexual, but it, AIDS made them the same. And a lot of people, uh, when we would go out and speak, would f take up, uh, w w found much more sympathy for us. It was, it was an absurd notion to, to us from our point of view because anyone that has AIDS suffers terribly from it. How you can distinguish and point a finger uh, when somebody is suffering from such an awful disease is, it, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't matter. Um, someone who's gay, who has AIDS, they didn't go out and look for AIDS. They have a lifestyle. They, I mean, gay is, uh, AIDS is not a, a homosexual disease. Uh, it's a disease of human beings, and it's a disease that's spread among human beings, from mother to child, from man to man, man to woman, woman to men, um, blood products. Blood products. Uh, there are a lot of ways of getting it, and when you have it, it doesn't seem to matter how you got it. And that's what you're trying. And that's to that's another that's this is another issue uh, that that we. Um, that I feel real strongly about also, that, uh, that everybody who has AIDS is suffering and needs everyone's compassion and concern. That it's not something that uh, is fun to watch. Do you feel Doug's presence sometimes when you see him? I feel his presence all the time. I think that he has left a spirit on this surrounding us that's driving me and driving Gary and Andy and all of us, uh, um, maybe I feel it more because um, I'm sort of organizing everything, but we're all just driven to uh, um, make beautiful music and, and try to do something positive with it. It just goes hand in hand. Uh, we all are expressing a love that we all have being musicians and um, even the AIDS, the, although the AIDS focuses more on me because he was my husband, he was the, Gary's brother-in-law, and Gary lived through all the frustration and the um, and the, and the um, illness with me. Uh, he suffered along with me because I had to watch and I had no control over it. So it, it has a rippling effect. AIDS has a rippling effect. It goes out and out and out and out into families and into the community. And it doesn't affect just the person who has AIDS. It affects everyone around that person, which is part of why the awareness is so important, because all of those people around that person who has AIDS, if they have a little better understanding about it and can minimize their, reduce the fear of it, then I think we'll all be able to, to find that compassion. And, and we found wonderful support. We were very, very fortunate, really fortunate. And now you're supporting the AIDS, uh, people with AIDS through your music. Right? Tell me a little bit about how that works. Well, it's more of a, a personal. We're, right now, we're, uh, you're donating we donate a portion. There's not a whole lot of portion yet, <laughs> but we're trying to make a portion. So that the awareness, of course, is, is what's most significant right now, just bringing the awareness bringing the, the, the topic, bringing and making mention of it. Um, and as we make more money and as we make more of a dent in, in that area, you know, we will make a, we've already made some small donations to Health Crisis Network, which is an organization that kind of got Doug and I involved in speaking out. Mm -hmm. uh, they are the Miami AIDS Project and they are involved, with, they have a hotline and they are involved with lots of, uh, um, AIDS awareness. Okay. Oh, I don't mean to grow you too much. That's all right. Probably what I should do is bring in some of the group with you now. Okay. So they can back you up. You want to move? Sure. Unless you guys want to tell me anything else about uh, AIDS and what you think people need to know and what what the uh, group means and mm -hmm. the legacy for your father. Well, what I was thinking about AIDS is that people shouldn't really worry that much. I mean, it's bad enough that a person might contract AIDS, but if people are going to be like prejudiced about it, then I, that, that, that's what I don't believe in. I don't think that people should do that. Because everybody, well, why is that? Tell me in your own words. Well, because I mean, they're, they're having enough pain just 
having the disease and knowing that they're going to die, they probably, I think, that they need support for other things. They need support. Well, very good for you. You're right about that 100%. Thank you. And you're supporting everybody right now. Anything you want to say, Todd? Um, well, um, last year, a, a whole lot of the kids in my school, they weren't treating me like a person. They were treating me like trash because the, because the people that knew about my dad that he that he had it that he died from AIDS they they were just making fun of me and treating me bad tell them tell tell tell, tell them what you did in your school um it was sort of my idea and my mom's idea that um last year we would uh do an AIDS awareness week for the school and I wrote a play for the AIDS Awareness Week and it's about my dad and, and AIDS and it teaches kids about AIDS. It combined the arts. He's in a magnet school that's mm -hmm. creative arts, drama, dance, music and art and he was in the drama department so he wrote a play and they did a, created a whole production around it and uh, by the way the Day County Public Schools uh, AIDS Information Department they just um, approved it as to be used in this public school they did a videotape of it mm, very good. so <clears throat> you've got your own legacy going for your father I bet he's proud of you also, also um, <laughs> yeah. and we're going every Saturday we go to this uh, uh, production uh, for for kids, um, it's where a lot of kids make up a play, and Voices I, United. But it's called Voices United, and I have a part in the play that is about a boy who has a who has a father that has AIDS, and no one's treating him like he's a person. If he, they're all uh, pushing away, they don't. He, no one wants him to play any of their games. Uh, they're they're all saying that you can uh, get AIDS from touching them or whatever. So we got the whole family doing yeah. stuff, <laughs> I guess. That's great. How did the kids act after you, you uh, wrote the play? They understood better? They understood more after they saw the play and then they understood about what AIDS is and about how I feel about it. So then nobody made fun of you anymore? After well, that, he was a star. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's good. You're creating your own legacy. See, the word... It's very appropriate, and I think applies to so many people. Any, you know, it's certainly we didn't coin. It's adorable, both of them. Okay, Thank I don't want to go the poor kids over and over. But we wrote it again. <laughs> I had another poem like two called songs. "Precious Love." So you knew you already had the album like uh, <laughs> one quarter done. Well, <laughs> you, the, the album was was going to go on Gary's song, but then I didn't well, know that she had so many uh, poems. Well, what we um, I wanted to get Gary's songs um, produced because he's been writing and there's so many. There's like hundreds, mm -hmm. right? Uh, between 100 and 200. That many songs? <laughs> yeah. Not that I remember. Right. All. What, what was the, what, when did you decide to? Since you well, got Paul is the here. one who kind of uh, anchored the whole mm -hmm. uh, electronic and te technological surge for us because he had you want Actually, what everyone s seems to forget is what really started us out as far as this collaborative effort was a, a simple coffee house that we played for Ellen and Paul's Temple. And it was for 100 people, and Andy and Ellen and I went up and sang the five songs that we knew at the time. This was a year and a month ago. And everyone enjoyed us so much that we said, well, you know, let's start that working on new material. Time. That was the first I time that we had that. played <laughs> together uh, and that we had met Paul. And uh, Paul mixed for us that night, and uh, Ellen set up her equipment there. And then it was like, well, people want to hear us again. Let's start practicing and Everybody working on new material. And before we, we knew it, we had three hours, four hours of material. And we uh, were uh, working on some of my originals and Ellen's originals. And now, now we're all collaborating together and writing new material to, all together, uh, which and we're coming up with a lot of, of really interesting and neat new styles. And, mm -hmm. uh, and instead of it just being one person, it's all of us. So we really are legacy now. Mm -hmm. But you didn't set out to form a group. No. 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 It's, it's, it's a year out. old, really. It's this a year is, old. 
Yeah. One thing that I have to mention, uh, when I met Ellen, she has never written a song in her life. And she didn't know that she had it in her. <laughs> and in, in, in a process of what, three weeks, we wrote five songs together. Like she wrote a whole concept of a song and I put the music. And, uh, you know, and I would come to, to her house to, to show, you know, I don't know, work on, on something else. And she would come up with, with an idea, would write a song immediately, like, you know, one song a day. <laughs> she <laughs> was like the poet then. Right. You were the music. The, right, right. right. But, but she, she had all this in her. And I said, why don't you record your song? Yeah. yeah, so we, it's like a metamorphosis, you know, it yeah. was, we've all been singing together, uh, four of us, on and off for, for years and years and years for fun, and they'd go out and sing different venues, you know, a talent show here, or open, a mic, open night, mic night, places. stuff like that, but the Beth Orr, I I've been, had this burning desire to produce Gary's songs, and I found Paul through my temple, and I brought Gary's stuff to Paul, and he ended, and I ended up writing, and then we've kind of all gone full circle back to now. Now, like Gary said, we're we're really legacy because we're all writing together. The the tape. How, how fortunate for you that you each seem to be able to do a different instrument too. Is that by design, or you just, <laughs> how'd that work out? By good fortune, by chance. Well, they dragged me into this. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen, Ellen, I was playing in a rock band, and Ellen said, you know, bring your flute over, and I think your flute would sound good with our music. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I have such a good time playing this, this beautiful music. And, uh, and you play the flute in a rock band? Well, it still does. You know, and it's, I play the sax, <laughs> and I sing okay. in the rock band, too. But, okay. but I don't get to play the flute that much. But, okay. but Ellen said, you know, I think that your flute would sound good with our sound. And uh, I think it fits real nice, and I really enjoy it, and I'm having a blast. I, I don't think it would be the same without the flute. No. I, I love it. Gives it a nice texture. Yeah. And people don't use flute enough, really. Uh, John plays uh, guitar and piano also. He's multi. And he sings, but not with us. <laughs> 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 we don't no, have enough vocals. We have enough vocals. <laughs> I have to find another niche. Yeah. So let me, let me guess. You guys don't really like each other. Uh, <laughs> and Andy right, has lots and lots of songs, too, that we're... we're Starting to work on and record, and we all collaborate very nicely together. Paul is like the catalyst. You know, he's oh, like the okay. the glue that he's drawing us all out and making us all, helping us to like form some really new great mm -hmm. sounds that are will be coming out soon. <laughs> That's the focus though, of our piece for the purpose of this news show, and and I know your whole album isn't about AIDS no. and no. awareness, but we do have to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, let me get somebody else's opinion, Steve, on on AIDS awareness and what legacy is about. Okay. Well, being a dentist, you know, I um, am confronted with AIDS and questions about AIDS almost da on a daily basis. Um, I let my patients listen to the CD while they're sitting there, and uh, <laughs> and you force them. To. <laughs> yes, I'm trying. I, might do. I said, if you want, it's no, we can. On my hold button. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be on my hold button too. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, uh, I said, if you want, no, we can. You have to listen I'm to the CD. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you your number. So you're doing your part. No, that way. no, but uh, you know, it it helps does help uh, raise the awareness. Any way, and you know, we can do that is uh, a plus. You know, for the battle against AIDS. And I, have the, I have the same problem. I'm their pediatrician, so uh, mm -hmm. uh, and so when they came to the practice, you know, we had to check them for AIDS and make sure that they were negative, and they were negative, and uh, mm -hmm. and thank God. And then there was really not any big concern because they were not really exposed in such a way uh, that there was any great concern. Uh, but uh, you know, it's we see AIDS in children, and uh, and there's to me no greater tragedy than a baby born with AIDS that lives several years and dies a slow and agonizing death. And that's something I want to see stop. And mm -hmm. so uh, I support Ellen's. And uh, what about Android. ignorance? Because I think they were born prior to Doug contracting HIV, am I right? Yes. So well, the chances yeah. of them having it were slim to nothing, am I right? That's well, the, actually no. No, the chances of them having it were, were significant. If I had contracted but it with... Only uh, if Ellen had... had I, I believe Doug was probably... Uh, HIV positive when we met. He's had blood products his whole life. Mm -hmm. So we just didn't know. We got a letter from the pharmaceutical company that said, send back batch 4077 factor mm -hmm. 8. We believe it's contaminated with the AIDS and, virus. And, and they had already and used Doug, it. And Doug is not the only uh, one. I, I have several patients who also, who were hemophiliacs who, who uh, got AIDS and have since, you know, have died. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Actually at the time that Doug and Scott 
contracted AIDS, they were saying that 99% of all hemophiliacs at that time were exposed. But now, because of now, the, the now things have, thank, you know, thanks to their courage and their uh, sacrifices, things have changed, and now the uh, the factors are, are safe, and uh, mm -hmm. hemophiliacs are really at very low risk now mm -hmm. to develop AIDS. Okay, okay. Ellen, you said you made an interesting point. This just proves how difficult. And it's not leprosy because you are having normal marital relations. Exactly. Exactly. Right. A little bit about that. I have um, my sister-in-law, uh, who was married to Doug's brother, who also died from AIDS. She is tested negative. I've tested negative all these years. Um, it's very hard to get, and it's very easy to get. Um, it's easy to get when you don't know how it's transmitted, and you don't pay any attention to. Uh, to what you're doing, and yet, uh, for some reason, there are those of us who've been exposed to the AIDS virus who have not contracted it. But I wouldn't want to take that chance now with what I know. Um, it doesn't make any sense to take that chance. I wouldn't want to gamble on the fact that my immune system would fight it or whatever it is the reason for me not getting so it. What you're saying is certainly give give a person with AIDS a hug. Absolutely. Oh, sure, sure. You know, the skin is a, a perfect. Um, barrier to especially children. Children need to be hugged. Yeah. And, and children with AIDS still need to be hugged. So what do you hope all as a group, what do you hope to achieve with this album um, and the C D? We, we all would like to quit our day job. <laughs> 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 professional music. I think that, our best <laughs> I think that, that all of us uh, deep down would love to uh, that, that music is probably our first Love. I have a business. Uh, we all have jobs. We all have a biz have something that we do besides this. But I think if we had an opportunity to do this all the time and create some, some uh, obviously the AIDS issue originated with me because of my situation. But everybody has rallied and. Coughing. <laughs> I didn't want to. <coughs> Sorry. Like you allergic to cats? I may be. I don't know. It just happened. So oh. <coughs> All right. Um, anyway, you have invested quite a lot of money, I'm sure, in this project. Yes. <laughs> Most time, <laughs> effort, and <laughs> yes. Right. So we'll make sure people can see you at the Musicians Exchange on May fourth. Right. Musicians Exchange May fourth at Sunrise. Okay. Um, what do you think Doug would say about all you guys sitting here right now? This is something that he he would I think he would have wanted us he to do. Well, no doubt. I think he's watching us, and uh, I think he's approving of it too. He's laughing. <laughs> he is somebody who was very enterprising and very entrepreneurial. And he had a business of his own and, and, and gambled and took chances. And uh, he, in a split second, he would have done something like this. And I know, and I, like I said before, I think he's, for me, he's, he's a driving force. And it's, it's, not a, it's not a sad thing anymore. This has been a very, it's been a catharsis. It's been an outlet. It's been a heal, it's, for me, it's been a healing it's my. It's uh, a friend of mine said to me once. Uh, maybe you. You know, I'm an artist. I'm a graphic designer. So she says, "Why don't you? I sense you're still feeling some frustration and and, uh, and mourning. And why don't you draw a picture? Do something artistic. And this is it. This is what's doing it. I, I want to uh, remind you when we were doing uh, this song. That you know, the main song of um, the, the title song. The title song. Not so much. It time. was so much time. I was um, recording uh, Ellen's song. Remember that vocal? That day was an anniversary of the um, dark death. And I remember, you know, she was kind of depressed. And we got into a mood of singing that song. And I saw her transform. She, it, you know, she used the energy of that moment. And we came up with an incredible track. You remember that thing? Yeah. yeah. It, all of this, all of this is very heartfelt. It's it's not only f heartfelt, but it's we're having fun, and uh, it's creative. All of us love music, and uh, and it's been, as Paul says, it's been for me very cathartic and healing. And I know he would be. He's looking somewhere. He's somewhere. He's hovering around. 